everybody, live from Koreatown, it is The Ozone. You are here with the Brothers Miller. I am Omar Miller, your host. I'm here with my brother Terry Miller, the icons. What's up, people? And What's up? let's get it on. You know what? We had a little bit of a disappointing weekend, I would say. A lot of bit of a disappointing weekend. Wow. Wow. Little All little. that hype. And, you know, I'm going to tell you something. I feel stupid. And I'm gonna tell I you, do, too. I'm going to tell you why I feel stupid. Because I let you and Ellie talk me into thinking that Chavez was somewhat real, where I've been on record many times saying that Chavez is a bum. And, I mean, you can. it's a trip to watch everybody because everybody's super high on the Canelo train, which, I mean, if you watch that fight, not watching a lot of fights, you would be super high on it. But that was literally a glorified sparring session of what we saw out there this weekend. Especially when you see a cat ring round by round, just not even taking a seat. Come on, man. That's, this is so disrespectful. Are so disrespectful. We want to cover a range of topics today. We got uh, we to gotta cover this Canelo versus Chavez and what really that was for, which was the announcement of Canelo p- fighting Triple G in September, which actually is going to be exciting. They just stole a quick 70 real quick from everybody to make sure that uh, for that announcement. Right. We got... Um, I want to talk about LeBron James. I'm I'm devastated. I can't believe what's going on. You're down with the king. I'm, I always have been for years. About ten of them. <laughs> Recruiting suckers, Mac and mother, Mac and man of them. Yeah. So I uh, want to talk about King James and the NBA playoffs. I want to talk about these New York Yankees? These young Yankees. Wow, baby bombers are serious out it's there. Like it's, it's real business. It's, real talk out there, son. It's real, real talk. It's real business. And then I want to talk about Lavar Ball. And Lonzo yeah. Ball, shoe baller brand, big baller brand, <laughs> coming straight out of Chino Hills, coming straight out of Tom Pin. But, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, so we want to talk about that. But let's get straight to it with this fight. You know, 70 bucks, $70. I sat around, I thought about so many different things that I could do for $70. Or could have done with it. That's what I mean, that, that I could have done with it. It was $70. Somebody just sitting on the street, you know, you could have, you could have helped out the world. I could have helped a lot of different people yeah. instead of that. I mean, I could have instead got. Instead of helping out Canelo. I could have <laughs> got about 64 Whoppers from Burger King. Right with tax. I what think. about the 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 Jack in the Box? Those tacos. Oh, the, tacos. The, oh my God! I could have had a hundred and, and twenty five hundred thirty tacos. Your stomach would hurt. Um, it might have exploded, <laughs> but I could have done that instead of giving my money to Oscar De La Hoya and Canelo. Now, nah, but but it's all good because Canelo's gonna get his very soon. <laughs> you gonna make him get his? <laughs> You'll get yours, dude. <laughs> I'm not. I'm gonna. I'm not even gonna make him get mine. It's it, get his. It's just there's another guy that wants to make him get his. And who is he? Mm. I, I got a feeling I know who you're for. Yeah. I'm looking at your hat, and what it, does it says G G G, also known as Triple G or Gennady Gennadyevich <laughs> Golovkin. And what does he want? He's Bilp. <laughs> and he came in the ring looking real WWE style. But let's just cover the fight for a second. What is there anything to cover? I mean, you have the idea that the bigger man made himself smaller. Was refused to throw punches. Literally, he refused. He to throw refused punches. to throw punches. Did and he have two hundred the whole fight? He didn't land two hundred. He did not land two hundred. Threw two hundred. He threw. I'm sure. He, uh, technically, I'm sure, I'm sure he threw that, but he didn't land two hundred. He didn't even land one hundred twenty punches the whole fight in twelve rounds of punishment. He, he's got to feel terrible physically because he got beat up bad. He didn't get knocked out. Well, he got beat up bad. But if the money was worth it, then you know maybe eh, take a little pounding. Well, that still doesn't mean you don't feel terrible physically. <laughs> you still it, got pounded. It, it, it takes a lick. It takes the licking off a little bit. I don't think. I think you still have to feel your kidney, liver, organ swelling. <laughs> you have to feel all that, as Ken Norton said. But but you know, first round, I thought, okay, he's just feeling them out and blah blah blah. And as it went on, you're thinking to yourself, this is getting to a position where there's going to be no spot for him to come back because once you take so much punishment, even unless you're a heavyweight. You don't your body can't respond with the kind of power that you need to, you know, to do what you need to do, which is to punish. Right. And not only that, you're talking about the punish the punishment. It's not just a punishment. If you get down so far in the fight, you can't come back anyway, not unless by knockout. I mean You on. can't win. <laughs> you why become Adrian and Rocky. Yeah, why did she say that to him? Uh, why did she bring the champ down? She had to bring him down. I, I had to bring him down. down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I don't I don't really know what that exhibition was about. Chavez said all the right things. Um he looked very yeah, bizarre and, and in I'm the, ashamed it, of myself. Yeah. Because we know better. We know better than that. We know better than to than to think that the league was gonna allow anything to stop the big money fight between Triple G and Canelo happen. The golden goose. 
we know better than to believe that the NBA will allow the Cavs and the Warriors to not make the finals <laughs> for a trilogy. Gonna ha- it's not going to happen. I don't, you know, what do you mean it's not going to happen? Well, it's going to happen. I'm, I, the, the Spurs are real, man. But let's let's not jump. Uh, okay, okay. Let's not jump. Jump man, jump man, jump man, jump man, jump man, jump. <laughs> so I think that I think that in this fight, you know, he said all the right stuff. He taunted Canelo about not being him being scared to fight Triple G and blah 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 blah. blah. And he went in there and he had he sold it. He sold it, and I bought. I bit. Hunch and gunch and bar. And I'm going to put all the blame on one man. Oh, Nacho Bearstein. <laughs> <laughs> Sound like they threw it on Nacho. <laughs> they did throw it on Nacho. They threw Nacho under everybody, the bus. Everybody threw Nacho under the bus except for Chavez Sr., who was devastated and looked disgusted by his son. Yeah. He really did. He looked like if he had the towel, he would have thrown it in. He just couldn't. He A guy with as much heart as Julio Cesar Chavez, who senior. realistically, yeah. senior, who realistically was probably pound for pound the best fighter in the world for over, a long time. F- yeah, for maybe like a 10 year period from like 85 to 93 or 94. He can't understand seeing somebody fight. Forget about the fact that it's his kid. He can't even understand seeing people fight without heart. Especially you seeing them get paid this kind of money. Crazy though that he's he, never made. He's never made that kind of money. He, and he made the most money actually to be a sacrificial lamb for Oscar De La Hoya twice. Right. And he still couldn't believe it. <laughs> After Oscar De La Hoya beat him up the first time, young upcoming stud. Like running back. He was back. still like, run it back. <laughs> that that, that, that back. didn't happen. Run it back. I don't believe. And they made it so bloody the second time. Oscar <laughs> De La Hoya made it so bad. He, the doctor wouldn't even let him continue. Made it ugly on him. And he still didn't get cheese like his son got to play games. And to come in, and he threw more punches than his son. Sure that, did. Come on, to come in underweight, to come in uh, um, confused. I mean, he looked confused. He didn't even really look scared. That was the part that made it all so suspicious. Is that he didn't look scared. He just looked confused. And the Academy Award goes to <laughs> Chavez Jr. Man, nah, it was it, he. He deserves a full round of applause <laughs> from the Academy. He got a nod. I, I don't. I got a nod. He didn't. He didn't win. He just got a, yeah, nod. got a nod. But everybody who gets a nod wins. So there it is. I mean, you know, that kind of thing. You have all these great fights so far this year. There's a few things I wanted to cover with this. Obviously, not the fight. Right. Anybody who missed it, you did the smartest thing in the world. You saved your time. You you missed twelve rounds of a lopsided beating. I mean, this was a beating that took place. Um, and uh, uh, Canelo Alvarez won in unanimous decision. And it really, you know, it's funny, it did have the desired effect because you could see he was feeling himself after the fight in the face off of Triple G. Right. I mean, really. And so what happened, folks, in case you didn't see it, if you're listening to the Ozone, you probably saw it, is after the fight, um, instead of Gennady Golovkin coming to the ring, which he was sitting ringside. He was sitting ringside. Suddenly, the lights went out and a Gennady Golovkin knockout highlight reel started to play, <laughs> which was pretty impressive. It was very impressive. And in part two, what what else happened was there was uh, Gennady came out from the, the the locker room like a WWF kind of stunt. It was crazy. And then he came in and Gennady came in speaking his speak and he promised big drama show. And that's what's going to happen September 16th. You can believe that because that dude is there to fight. And he's Gennady willing to leave it all out there on the mat. He's He loves fighting. Yeah. He's not interested really in boxing. I took Canelo, you know, to his his self too, he likes to fight. He it's does just like that to fight. I feel like he's being pampered and, and held back a little bit by the De La Hoyas and whatnot because they don't want to put him out there in a situation where he's actually going to get toasted. Because not to take away anything from his skill set, but he's not the fighter that everybody – tries to stack him up to be because he's not in the same ca- class with Triple G. We're going to find out September 16th. I think uh I think he's in the same class. I don't think it's I don't think it's a lopsided thing like that, but I do believe that Triple G is a much superior middleweight. I'm very interested to see what the weight is going to be for that fight. Like are they going to make it a catch weight? Is it going to be for all the belts so it has to be at 157? I wonder what they're going to do for that. So, if I was Triple G, I wouldn't come down to 157. Why? I mean, Isn't that, oh, sorry. I didn't know if it would be 160 or they would stay oh, at that 165 that they were at. Yeah, sorry, sorry. You just fought Danny sorry. Jacobs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Why am I going to come down to 157? No, it makes, makes all the sense in the world. So so you have that. The other side that I would say is uh, that I thought was pretty interesting was, other than the WWE side, which obviously made it clear right after, I mean, immediately after the fight, now, before Max Keller could even get in the ring, this was happening. And what what it made very clear was, this was a sparring session planned just to announce the big fight. And 
all of the people like us got tricked into believing that this actually was a big fight, which it was not. Right. And I just want to know if Chavez Jr. was in on it or if 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 he just actually is that bad. I I call him a he, bum. There's a bunch no of way times. he could be that bad. I just not with 50 wins. Yeah, and not not with him not throwing punches. You have to throw punches. Even when he threw a couple of heavy punches, you saw that he backed the little man up. He, he caused. I agree. I agree. And so for him just not to throw punches is not acceptable. It reminded me of that time that Shane Mosley almost knocked out Floyd Mayweather and spent the next nine rounds holding him up. Right. Um, which was also disappointing. But what I was what I what else I was that's it's funny that you say that because that's what else I wanted to cover. I think there's a few things that happened in this fight. Um. One, we need to get a body or a commission to study boxing, the fix being in in boxing. There needs to be some sort of like a, a, a President Cheeto, Russia Gate scandal that's going on needs to be up for that. Right. Part two is Canelo pounded Chavez Jr. I mean, destroyed him without any sort of resistance and still couldn't knock him down, that's let alone not, knock him yeah, out. I never that saw him like crazy not, hurt. That I, this is the part that was so disappointing. Chavez never looked hurt. He just didn't fight. Right. Which is completely unacceptable. He should have to forfeit some of his parts for that. Um, and and I really I wonder with that, you know, that to me puts in question Chavez's power. I mean, uh Canelo's power. Definitely. Canelo knocks down, knocks out uh, Amir Khan, who's a 147 max. He right. really should fight probably 140, 140. You know, he'd probably come to the ring at 147. Um, He didn't put Cotto on his back, did he? When we no. Were there? No, he didn't. I thought Cotto won the fight. Yeah, he had a, yeah, he, he looked like he was uh, looked maybe. Like a couple of times <laughs> yeah. he looked suspect. Yeah. Um, I think that they've they've mastered the Floyd Mayweather strategy of trying to wait until the person that you're supposed to fight has slipped a little bit. So what they're hoping for is that Gennady isn't as good as he would have been a year and a half ago, two years ago when they were supposed to fight. And Canelo is still on the come up because he's only 27 years old, 26 years right. old. Gennady's going on 40. And Gennady's going on 542, still knocking fools out. <laughs> right. Gennady's, yeah, Gennady's 35, 36. And, uh, and so obviously Canelo is more in his prime. I still don't think he's ready. We don't even need to go into that because we got months and months to talk about that. But I really wanted to cover that. I wanted to cover the idea that even with that open pounding that he allowed, Chavez still stayed on his feet. I don't think that bodes well for Canelo because, well, honestly, I want to see Canelo actually get hit like the way that Gennady's going to hit him. And You're going to see it <laughs> September 16th. And see how he responds to that because you know you've sp spoken to the champ and he has a very... He like, has a great understanding yeah, great of what understand happens when he gets yeah, guys when hurt. He, when he hurts you. And, yeah. and so that's going to dictate the pace of that Canelo if he can recover after getting hit And like they've sparred before. And Canelo in the past talked about how freakish his power is. Yeah. So they Canelo has a general idea. He knows. I mean, he did all the tough talk. I was, he, he gave me the most interesting man in the world in speech <laughs> afterwards. When I was born, fear left me when I left the womb. Do <laughs> so you, pretty, think, that, pretty do you awesome. think that he had it written it already? I, I didn't look like it was, it was a good. It was a good performance. It was a good performance. Did he get a nod? He didn't get a nod. No, 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 no. no. Was, his wasn't. work was too obvious. <laughs> his work was, there there <laughs> needed to be a little subtlety in his work. His work was a little too obvious. He was in obvious. character. He, full time. He was in oh, character. No, he wasn't in character, though. I'm going to take that back because he was dancing around the ring, giving you a little showboat and everything. That's not him. That's not him at all. That's not him at all. We got a caller that once that was live at the scene, and they want to speak about what they felt like was the situation. Hello? Champ Creed live in the Ozone. How you feeling? Oh, oh. I'm live. I'm good. You way too live. <laughs> listen, listen. I just woke up from that fight on Saturday because it was a snoozer. <laughs> it was a full blown snoozer. I hope you had good pillows because otherwise you'd have got a crook in your neck. Come on, man. Of course I would have. Now nah, we wanted to speak to you. We're here. Man. It's me. It's Big O. It's it's my brother Terry. What's going on, man? Now you were live in hey, the building, up, correct? Everybody? Yes, I was. Now speak on it. What was the, what was the atmosphere like there? As a kid, say what was the vibe? Okay, all right. You know what? The the vibe for the entire week was a, it was a festive vibe. It was electric. It's what you would expect with two icons of boxing in terms of Canelo Alvarez and, and Chavez Jr. You know, facing each other because the fans anticipated that they were going to get a, a slugfest, a war. You know, something that they'd be able to talk about for weeks and weeks in a positive manner. And up to the fight, when the guys walked out, I mean, it was buzzing. The atmosphere was, was it was as big as 
you know, what you would expect for this type of event. Not as big as the Anthony Uni Joshua versus Klitschko fight, but nonetheless, you well, know. Those, whoa, whoa, whoa. those are the big boys. And, don't don't <laughs> don't get it twisted. They got they have weight classes for yeah. a reason. Yeah, yeah. But you know, the cultural pride was what this fight was driven off of and it's how it was promoted, thus it being primarily placed on the weekend of Cinco de Mayo. But from the opening bell all the way to the end, you could feel the air leave the building. You can hear the fans get restless. You can hear the boos and the chatter start to rise as each round went by. Uh, and it turned out to be a very, very disappointing evening for the general public that paid for it. Obviously, we all know that. But inside of the arena, round to round, was there a feeling that Chavez Jr. was going to start fighting? Was there suspicion? What was what was going on there at the at the T-Mobile arena? Well, you know, here's the thing. We all know Chavez Jr. He's a slow starter. He'll give away the first three or four rounds, you know, and then he'll start to, you know, leverage an attack to the body that'll slow his opponent down. And then we know he turns it up in the rounds 10, 11, 12, the money rounds. That's what he that's what he usually does, you know, when he's winning, when he's focused. Um, I would say his best effort today, if you look at the Andy Lee fight, you look at the uh, Sergio Martinez fight, that's what they expected of Chavez. But when he didn't give that to him, um, of course it could be to the weight drain, and it could be a, a number of reasons why. When he didn't give that to them, uh, the fans just slowly started to, to lose interest in you know, it, this was one of the most embarrassing fights that I've actually ever been to, to be honest. I, I, I think this is, for, for what was at stake, for everybody talking crazy about Mexican pride and making a choice and to the, the proud Mexican heritage and culture that was on the line for these, you know, the, the fighters are considered warriors and, and real, like, champions and whatnot. This is the worst, this is the most embarrassing thing in the world. The guy didn't even sit down to get a rest on you. That's how, that's how little he thought of you, and you did nothing about it to fight against. I don't even want to cover the fight. I want to know what it was like when the lights went out after the fight was over and the Triple G knockout reel ran. What was that like? Mm. Okay, all right. Now, before we get to that point, you brought up a good, you brought up something really, really interesting. Now, let me ask you this. With all that on the line, the pride, the country, the attempt to resurrect your career, with all these things on the line for Chavez Jr., can you give me three reasons why he performed the way that he did, just from your vantage point? Yeah. Um, I got three reasons. The first is a guy named Benjamin Franklin. The yes is a the, the okay. second is a guy named uh, Ulysses Grant, and and uh, yeah. and and the third is a guy named Nacho Bearstein. And so I don't know okay. who was more influential. Nacho's plan of trying to outbox Canelo with somebody who's never really boxed a day in his life, or the idea that potentially mm -hmm. there was there was money involved for Chavez to really take a back seat and end his career. This is the end of his career. I, is, the Mexican culture will not stand for this sort of, for that. They don't forgive you for that. They, nobody's no. going to stand for him and, and pay for this. And what do you think? Okay. All right. And, and I agree. I agree with what you said, because here's the thing. I think it may have been like the fifth or sixth round when he had Canelo pressed up against the ropes towards the and corner. And he stepped back. He... He listen. He laid in a body shot. Oh yes, he did. He sure did. And it and it Canelo moved Canelo. I saw, yeah, I saw Canelo. I saw Canelo wince just a little bit. Now, now you you can you can keep your composure externally, but you know if you've been in the gym, you you can tell when a guy you know it hurts. He's known. And, and you it know hurt too bad, but it makes you flex. You know. So I saw Canelo like jerk a little bit, and I said, okay, the more more work is coming. He backed off. He backed off. And he I'm backed like, off. Like. Why? Why would you do that? What, like, why did, would you listen? Do that? So I am not above a good conspiracy theory here on the <laughs> Ozone. Don't think that's the case, right? So, so now, do you think? What do you yeah, think? Do you think the fix was in? Uh, he got paid to make weight. He got, he got paid, paid to make to show weight. Up. Yeah, and 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 he, he got paid to show up. And I didn't see a guy that, that tried to win. Wanted to win. No, neither did I. I didn't see a guy that wanted to hurt his opponent. Nope. I didn't see a guy that wanted to bruise his opponent. You know. Right. In case of, the, the for, for history, the next fight. Right. Yeah. And, and look, look at this. Listen. I mean, just, just so you guys know, I, you know, I used from every dynamic of the fight game, MMA, boxing. I promoted. I refereed. I put together street fights. I put together cable fights. I report everything. There are 10 ways to fix a fight. I happen to know 15. And from, all my experience, from, from, from all my experience, this looked like 
someone got paid to lay down. Wow. And his father just couldn't believe it. He was disgusted. His father just could not believe what he was seeing. He just it was it was yeah, it was and, amazing to see. Now I got one more thing for you, Champ. Champ, tell the people yeah, where they and, can and, find you, first and foremost. Where can they find you on social media or or, okay. or even at the house? Where uh, can they find you? Okay. All right. You guys can find me at Champ Creed Everything. That's at okay. Champ Creed on Twitter, at Champ Creed on Instagram, at Champ Creed on Snapchat. You know, you guys can find me there. Um, and Champ, that's Creed like the movie. Uh, Champ is in champion at Champ Creed. But like you said, the crowd, they went ballistic when Triple G came out and the uh, the promo video came together. And then here's another thing. That promo video was put together for about a week. No, that's been together. That was right? that was so, not. Yeah, that 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 yeah, was this, nothing. Yeah. That was not a spontaneous reel that no. they put together. This whole thing was a big, huge no. announcement. A theatrical display. Yeah, th- th- That's exactly. exactly what it was. It was yeah. a theatrical display for an announcement of of the real fight. And yeah, I got a exactly. I got a quote from Gennady about that real quick. He said what, Saturday what, was yeah, a little boring, like sparring. Canelo doesn't want to finish. That's not good for people. A lot of people bought tickets and a pay per view <laughs> for what? For a show. Everybody likes drama, like my knockouts. <laughs> mm-hmm. Who do mm-hmm. you have for that yeah. fight? Yeah, I mean, look, listen. I think Triple G, wow. You know, these, these guys have, have a storied history that a lot of people may or may not have seen them spar before. And Canelo's always been able to uh, position himself against Triple G in terms of, like, landing counter, counter punches, but they don't really phase him because the kid's got a jaw like Stonehenge. And I think in the end, his durability and his punching power is going to wear Canelo down. So I, I got feel- Triple G winning that one. Uh, yeah, and and if you look at the photo, I mean Triple G looks very, very noticeably bigger than him. Right, and this is not a Chavez bigger, which led me to be led astray. Where it's a, <laughs> it's a, it's a size difference that actually the person won't use. Gennady actually is a good boxer. Yeah, he's going to establish that jab. He's going to go to the body, and then Canelo is going to taste some canvas. The other thing Gennady can do is take and, a punch. Hold on, and then look, look, look what you just mentioned. He's the bigger man, he's the longer man, he's going to establish the jab. Do you know Chavez threw like maybe 20 jabs the whole fight? This, 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 this makes, you, this makes you think, jabs. this really makes you think that the fix was in. It's just, just, I understand getting beat. I don't understand not trying. Then that's what right. I'm seeing Especially here. Especially getting exactly. paid millions to do that. And and I mean, and the, and the yes. flag was on the line. The flag was on the line. I don't get it. You're all, my thing is, is I never understand it. You're already rich. Chavez is already rich. He's got his family name on the line. And he's got to go back to the He's got to go back to Mexico with that. Come on, man. I don't understand. I don't I just Listen, Wow. Name name any fight where there were two highly touted Mexicans where they had a primetime fight at a primetime venue at a primetime point of the year. And it was a disappointing fight. This is the first you time I can never, ever think of that. Like, never. You can catch the Mexican versus Mexican bout on FS8. <laughs> and it can be a Thursday <laughs> night Channel fight at, in the backyard. And you're like, damn, <laughs> they chunked him. Exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. Let's hear what Chavez had to say after the fight, this bum. Oh, God. Hold on, <laughs> champ. Julio. You lost every round. You went the distance. But took a beating tonight. What happened? Bueno, me, me, me ganó en la distancia, en la velocidad. Estaba amarrado un poquito fuera de distancia. Y Canelo, un buen peleador, estaba muy activo. You know, he beat me. He beat me at distance. You know, I wasn't feeling with, I wasn't feeling at distance. And he's a very active fighter. He's a good fighter. Beat me. Coming into the fight. Everyone figured that you would try to use your size on the inside with Canelo, that you would crowd him, lean on him, brawl with him, which is your style. And we heard coming into the fight, you would maybe box from a distance early. Lo que pasa es que yo quería boxearlo. Fue cuando él se fue a las cuerdas. Lo que pasa es que me faltó tirar más golpes. You know, I wanted to box, but then he went to the court, to the ropes, and I just needed to throw more punches. Oh, you think? <laughs> Hey man, this is this is disgusting <laughs> on so many different levels. It is. Whatever. I mean, I you know what? I have to take the L. It's been a couple of websites clowning yeah. me because I even said that that he could give Canelo problems, which obviously he did not give Canelo problems. He should have gave him problems. Yeah, but you know that. What can we do? Yeah. yeah. Now here's the here's the last thing I want to cover with you, champ. We're gonna let you go. We got a lot to cover today. Um, 
Now, where do you think this? Because I really think this is a big black eye for boxing. This one, because we've had wonderful fights so far this year. It's been a great year, and all of yeah. them have been on premium television or network television. None of them have been pay per view. This is the first pay per view big fight of the year, and it's a total dud. Does this spell the end for pay per view, or do we have to look for a? Uh, uh, Andre Ward and Kovalev to resurrect us for people to even be willing to buy the Triple G Canelo fight. Okay, well, you know, just from a from a business standpoint, the pay per view model it's becoming phased out for the yeah. simple fact that in totality you have a multitude of media viewing platforms from Fire Stick to Netflix to your phone to television to DVR. So you know, these used to be must see events. And people don't want to pay for must-see events because they'll be disappointed, as in this fight. So to answer your question, yes, this is a black eye for boxing, but it's also a black eye for the uh, pay-per-view industry because fans don't want to pay for something to where they'll be disappointed. Now, the only thing that I think boxing will have to think about moving forward is switching to a OTT platform, over-the-top platform, whereas, you know, you can get your quality programming like Ballers from HBO Come when you on. download the app, or you can get your quality programming like the WWE app or even the UFC app where you can get a collection of these events. And then what the fan will have is the opportunity to say, okay, I'm only going to pay for the best fight that they put on pay-per-view and everything else. I'll stream it through an app or I'll watch it on another device. So with boxing, they don't have a collection of all their content in one singular place. So a fight like that, not only does it hurt the credibility of the sport, but it hurts the future purchasing power um, of the sport because fans don't want to feel like they've been hosed and the fans in the T-Mobile arena and the fans that paid for last night's fight or Saturday's fight, they felt completely hosed. Totally hosed. Yeah. I felt hosed. I can feel it. The water's still trickling down my back, but I felt like that 1968 civil rights hose. It was like uh, it was that hot hose to my face that knocked me down, and I'm looking for the German Shepherd to bite me up right. next because they that stole my money. Walk. Yeah, it was that freedom walk, man. So, all right, champ. Thanks for coming in. Yeah, well, well we appreciate, appreciate you. Uh huh. Stay up. I'll right, be talking to you soon. Mate. Nice contribution from Champ Creed there. What else is nice is my flannel that I'm wearing on a nice spring day from the 5-4 Club. Ladies and gentlemen, did you know that this segment has been brought to you by the 5-4 Club? You can go to 5-4-Club.com and sign yourself up or sign your man up for a box of clothes that's worth more than $150 delivered to your doorstep every single month. Next thing you know, you got a wardrobe and it only costs 65 bucks. Go to 5-4-Club.com, use promo code OMAR and watch your blessings flow. 5-4 Club, life. And style. It really flows. This is a nice shirt right here, man. Yeah, your piece is nice too. Yeah, thank you. What else is nice is LeBron James. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds nice. I literally have no understanding of what LeBron James is doing right now. <laughs> He's on a level that everybody always thought potentially that he could get to. His level is now confirmed. He is maturation. The maturation is complete. And your man is totally and completely unstoppable. We're talking about he's Super Mario with all of the extra lives. He is Leroy when he's got that glow. <laughs> he's on fire. Your body <laughs> burned when you got that glow. Let's look at LeBron James. I'm gonna. I'm. I'm looking at a tweet that I sent out three days ago. So these numbers are even more stupid now. In a ten game playoff run, all wins. LeBron James' numbers are as follows. Starting with game seven, uh, game six or seven, uh, game six, I think it was, of the the, the uh, championship series last year. 41, 16, seven and three. Crazy. 41, eight, 11 and four. 27, 11, 11 and two. 36, six, 13 and three. 25, 10, seven and four. 41, 13, 12, and 1. 33, 10, 4, and 4. 35, 10, 4, and 1. 39, 6, 4, and 3. 35, 8, 7, and 1. 
these are the most disgusting video game numbers. <laughs> the numbers are perverted. The numbers are <laughs> pervert. They need to register. <laughs> they need to register. They need to register <laughs> in, 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 to move into the neighborhood. <laughs> these numbers are unbelievable. This guy is literally doing it all, but not doing it all. He's doing it all without being selfish. LeBron James is at a level now where the game looks so comfortable and easy with him that he has allowed his greatness to rub off on the other players. Supernova. He He's a supernova. He makes the other players better. Right. Kyle Korver misses a jumper. He gets the rebound and shoots it back to Kyle Korver. Hit that. And he hits <laughs> it. And next thing you know, everybody's playing with confidence. And I'm here to say I could be a victim of the moment here. This guy is the best of the best at this point. No question. I can't say of, you know, it's always hard of all time because you can be a victim of the moment. Right. But when we're talking about just right now, right now for this from game five of last year's finals to now, LeBron James is as good as anybody that has ever picked up a basketball Throw it ever. Up. Throw it up. Throw up the dub. <laughs> when you see LeBron James throw up the dub. That dude is getting W's out here. Oh, my goodness. And the thing is. Dominating is, against nice squads. Toronto has a nice squad. Toronto actually has a nice squad. I mean, Kyle Lowry just quit. It's so bad. <laughs> Kyle, Kyle Lowry. Lowry just quit after getting swept. And DeMar DeRozan had the nerve to come out and say, well, if we had LeBron James on our team, we probably would have won this game. <laughs> That's you would have. Disgusting. <laughs> disgusting. And, and He could take a college team and take him to the playoffs. Dude is real. He could take him to the playoffs. They wouldn't win. They wouldn't win, him. but he'd take he him to the playoffs. He'd get to the play in the East. He'll get to the and playoffs is, in the yeah. East. He, he wouldn't get to the playoffs in the West, but he would get to the playoffs. If you gave him Villanova, he would get to the playoffs in the get East. To the playoffs. He'd get there. And I'm I'm I just can't say enough about the maturity because I've always been honest about my criticisms of LeBron James. Early in LeBron James' career, he was fragile mentally. I don't care what anybody says. I watched the games. That's I about maturation, the though. The he did mature. I'm not. I'm, I'm giving him love. I'll give him love. Throw up the love. I'm, I'm just going to sit back I'm, I, and this is, glow this is, in the love. This is a totally and, and completely uh, 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 period of love. This is a love letter I'm giving to King James here. The guy has gone from somebody who was rattled by off-court stuff, on-court stuff, people talking crazy to him, expectations, the whole song and dance, to when you watch LeBron James now, even when he flops, because all the NBA players flop. And travel. And travel. <laughs> Forget about that. That's so out of hand. Even when he does these things, there's an elegance to it that is like, he. it's all under control. It's all part of his plan. Nothing rattles King James anymore like the basketball did before. IQ is It's over. He has reached the top level. He's 99 out of 99. He's player He's on player. the video He's game. He's player. He could realistically call EA Sports or 2K and say, take me off the game. Take if you me guys, off. Take if my you guys, game off the back of you that guys, If you guys are going to put me on the game, I need a uh, $100 million because I'm player. Just put me on as player 23. Because he's, he's, I mean, forget about it. He's hitting jumpers. He hits free throws now. He dishes the pill. The threes are ridiculous. He was shooting what, like 53, 56%? I, like I can't say enough about it. I don't, and, and I, I say all that not just to give love to King James, but because at this point, I don't see anybody beating them. I don't see the Warriors beating them. I don't see the Spurs beating them. Especially you can break them down. He breaks you down like that defensively and kicks it out to a Kyle Corver, not even talking about Kevin Love or Kyrie. J.R. Smith has stepped his game yeah. up. I think that now the only kind of way that you beat uh, LeBron, this kind, this version of the Cavs team is you need yourself a Shaquille O'Neal, yeah, you or, need a Bruiser, or, right? or a Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. You need a you need a guy on the other team that you cannot stop, and also a guy that gets other people in foul trouble. Right, Kareem does that. Yes, you know what I mean. Magic Johnson does that. Right, Michael Jordan does that. The Diesel, forget about it. You're gonna foul the whole team out foul if they the call the game out. fairly. Yeah, you know, and and. What I'm seeing is, you know, Golden State's doing their thing. They're kind of flying under the radar. They're still, you know, uh, uh, they're still undefeated, I do believe, as well. I don't feel like they have depth, though. That's the problem with them. I feel like they have their team. I think the biggest thing that they have is a suspect amount of chemistry because they seem to play better when Kevin Durant is not on the team. Right. Um, but I digress. We'll see what happens. This is why they play the games. I think, obviously, they're about to get past the Jazz. Um. 
And I hate the idea that whoever they play in the next round is going to be undermanned. You see, they just announced Nene Hilario is out for the season. Yeah, yeah, Nene is finished. That's man. huge. The Rockets are finished. I don't think the Rockets can win without Nene. I don't. I know they. Now nah, watch me way up. <laughs> what? Now what you nah, gonna do? Now watch me Nene. What? 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 Now nah, watch what? me there. Yep. <laughs> and watch me Nene. Nene. And I, I don't think they can win without him because he actually gave validity and credibility to that D'Antoni system that has never proven to work. Right. And they were already on wobbly legs. I don't know if they're on. I mean, they're pretty good. I don't know if they're on wobbly legs. Well, they but, were down two one. They tied it up two two now. Yeah. But but they literally need a Nene to to bind that squad, to give they them some kind of defensive squad, element, uh, and and to give them a force. Right. They need a. They need presence inside, and Nene gives you that. And he's a big man that can run the court. Yes. Now. You lose him, and then on the flip side, the Spurs have lost Tony Parker. Tony Parker obviously isn't the same Tony Parker he was, no. but he's still very, very important. But they have groomed these other guys like Patty Mills and the other kid was the I agree. that they brought up so that it's not a loss like you losing Nene. Nene is a bigger I agree loss with than, that. than Tony Parker. I agree with that, but at the same time, I also— A loss is a loss, but— I, but, I, I, think, I think when you don't have a guy—I mean, Tony Parker is clutch. He's a guy that makes clutch baskets. Yeah, but he can't give you big minutes anymore. He doesn't need to give you big minutes. He needs to give you what clutch you minutes. Him? This is the same thing that you need from Ginobili. Is that you Ginobili's need, giving it to you? You need a you need a hot ten minutes. It's like it's like having a hot freestyle versus putting together a full album. <laughs> yeah. If I just need a if I need a hot sixteen, I'm calling a different rapper than if I need a hot album. Right. You know, and this is like it's like if I need a hot regular season versus if I need a hot Super Bowl. These are these are different people that we're calling for these for these effects. But I think that um, I think that Golden State is going to have the 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 pass of not having to play the best version of either team that they're going to face. Um, well, this hurts you though when you have to play against the t- the cream of the crop, you know. Well, you're about to you're going to see it because I don't see the Celtics or the. I would be amazed if either the Wizards I think give the Cavs more problems than the Celtics do. Right, and I think that. It's still going to be hard to get one game off of the Cavs because they are so focused. I feel the exact opposite. Celtics gave um, the Cavs a problem, and I think it's a matchup issue more so than anything. But the Wizards, I don't feel like they're going to be able to give them because they have too much inconsistency with. Uh, they have. They, this is a year. This is that catapult year where yeah. it really advances the the organization. Mm-hmm. But this isn't the year that they win it all. Mm-hmm. But I think they can get past the Celtics. Oh yeah, this the is Celtics what I'm saying. Are just about done. And and this is this is what I mean though. So I don't know who. But, you know but, what I mean? Uh-huh, but I feel like the the matchup for the Celtics against the Cavs would be would give the Cavs way more of a problem than what the Wizards are going to give them. We'll see. We'll see whoever it is that gets there. But either way it goes, I'm seeing I'm seeing sacrificial lamb action for both of them. <laughs> I just, <laughs> down lamb, down. <laughs> I just hope that you don't get anybody hurt. That's all it is. I just don't want right. to see nobody get hurt. And that's yeah. all. It's and and because I want to see the Warriors and the Cavs in the trilogy going head up, and I want them with Kevin Durant, and I want to see what happens because I believe that that the Cavs got work for him. I just the numbers are just like <laughs> <laughs> has anybody ever put up numbers like this? I don't know. I, that, haven't, seen, I haven't seen any numbers like these. Not from the great Michael Jordan. Not from anybody. I mean, Mike's <laughs> Mike's numbers are stupid. His numbers they, are they, stupid. They, they, Mike, Mike's numbers are stupid. But but and and the thing is, and this is what you always have to go back to. With Michael Jordan, if you watch Michael Jordan play, which is that oftentimes it was the glue in between the numbers that actually made his presence so outrageous. Mike may not have gave you these stupid retarded numbers, but that's because Michael Jordan played in the league when there was a lot more big men and it wasn't guard friendly to get rebounds like it is now. Mm-hmm. But what Michael Jordan did do, one stat that I wish that I could get a hold of and get my hands on is how much foul trouble was the other team in? Because Michael Jordan kept the team in foul trouble because Michael Jordan was relentless to the rack. Well, this is something that uh, LeBron's incorporating in his game. You watch see it, that. And you carry, he carry people on his shoulders, and he doesn't even get as many calls as most of the superstars. And so if you let him start getting those calls, man, you can see the whole team in foul trouble. I mean, literally, Golden State Warriors, every, anybody. What can you do with a guy who's that big, 6'8", running down the court like that, I think I think Golden State actually this is where them having a Kevin Durant helps them a lot 
because they got length, even though they don't have thickness. They have length. But you saw what Kevin Durant flops around the court like a, a spaghetti noodle. And then he's a tough guy all of a sudden. That's yeah, the part right. that really he's surprised me. He is a studio gangster. <laughs> he's banging hard on yeah. wax. I don't understand what's happening. This is going out to you, studio gangster. <laughs> he is a prankster. And so uh, I don't I don't know about that. I still think that Draymond is the key to that team. No question. And, and the chance of them beating the Cavs. All lies on Draymond Green's shoulders if he can control himself. Which he's showing that it doesn't look like he can do. I don't know about that. I mean, he had one episode in the whole playoffs so far. That's a lot less than he had last year. Yeah. So I don't I don't I don't think that that's necessarily accurate. Yeah, but I I saw him yelling at the revs and all that kind of stuff, man. You gotta keep yourself under control. I think that when push comes to shove, it's going to be under control. Next round is going to be an exact uh, – it, it's going to be time for them to actually play. I think next round we might actually see a loss for both the Cavs and the Warriors, which should wake them up to be prepared to play each other. Because, right. I, honestly, I think they're both looking past the the, the teams that they're playing. Um, now, a really unfortunate news out there in the Bay with Steve Kerr and his back, man. Right, that's a serious issue, man. That sounds to terrible. Forget about the game. They said he has a spinal leak. A sounds spinal terrible. cord leak. That sounds so painful. And that science and he on seems the back like is such not a perfected. cool guy. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's not that like it a... would be cool if he was a, a jerk and to have a back problem, but <laughs> I just you know what I mean? Like, like a guy you would want to hang out with, right? He does. He does. Seems like a really like an open minded kind of dude, progressive kind of thinker. Uh even with the way that he approached coaching the team, you know? That's I, I hope he heals up. Otherwise, it's gonna be interesting to see Mike Brown coach against LeBron James. Ah! That would that would be interesting. <laughs> Um, what else is interesting is this life in the bottle I got here. I see. Oof, gorilla life. Read off the ingredients here. Purified water, alfalfa chlorophyll, and vitamin C. It's helped me heal up, folks. I was doing bad last week. I went down to Miami and was feeling a little stuffed up and was feeling bad. Now I'm back at them. You can hear it. <sighs> gorilla life. Life in a bottle. Go to thegorillalife.com. They're accepting PayPal now, by the oh, way. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Recovery juice in a bottle. <sighs> yep. That's it. So I want to move on to uh, our favorite sport. We just put it last because you guys don't know what's good for you. And we tend to babble on about it. Uh, Babylon from Babylon is Major League Baseball is happening. And uh, I have something to cover that is terrible. Kurt Schilling has proven himself once again to be a complete and total clown. And that he is, mate. I mean, Kurt Schilling went on Breitbart, the notorious, you know, white supremacy, pro-white, uh, right-wing website, and just literally came out of his face to say that Adam Jones made up the whole incident in Fenway Park with being called uh, a nigga and having peanuts thrown at him. Now, what he does Adam Jones get out of that? Adam Jones is a millionaire a hundred times over, and he balls, by the way. Right. Adam Jones is top five uh, uh, center fielders in all of baseball. And he just decides to make the stuff up about Boston. Why would he do that? What would what would what possibly could come out of that for Adam Jones to make that up? <laughs> he, he, what possibly came out of that is that we got to see Kurt Schilling for the person that he is. Wow, preach, speak on it, son. <laughs> for being that class clown, he's the clown of baseball. It's ridiculous. I it, there's no reason for Adam Jones to make up anything like that. Nothing, nothing. And I wanted to I wanted to use that as a segue to speak about casual racism. Because I think one of the parts that's very difficult for people to understand, especially white folks that are not of color or who may not have an experience hanging out with a lot of people of color growing up or in the workplace, is to understand how prejudice in the United States has seeped in and was built into every system that's there. Right. It's systemic. It's the it's it is there so that the playing field is never level. And it's hard for a lot of people I've learned to see that it's never level. You're being a casual racist when you say stuff like, oh, she's good looking for a black girl. Right. Oh, that was a good that was a that was a good song for uh, for for uh, Latina. Right. That's casual racism. You have to understand that you're a part of the problem if you use phrases like that. And unfortunately, we find a lot of people use those phrases and feel like, oh, what, what's the problem? This is what I'm saying. If you're, if you're in the, the habit of starting sentences with one of my best friends is, chances are you're a racist. <laughs> you're the, you're you, the man. You, you are the man. And your thumb is probably on someone's neck of color. Right. And, and, and we see it all over the place. We see it in sports. Literally, 
kudos to the to the Red Sox fans who gave Adam Jones a standing ovation the next day in a symbolic uh, 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 showing of support to say, hey, look, that's not what we're all about. I can remember, unfortunately, that this isn't a one-time incident because if you remember that Sports Illustrated article when they talked to Ellis Burks back in the 90s, early Move 90s, on. and they were talking about how he felt like he was on an island. Mm-hmm. And at that point, Ellis Burks was one of the best players in baseball. They called it Ellis Island. <laughs> yep. And, and – you know, and then you look at this situation and the Red Sox themselves, Fenway, banned for life a uh, 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 Bostoner who decided to, after the national anthem, say, ah, oh, that was a great, that was a great rendition until she niggered it up. Yeah. Banned for life for that. And you know how much people in Boston love to go to the stadium? You crazy? And and <laughs> That's an arrow to the heart. And, and it's just, it's unfortunate because these are the same people that will come up to me when I'm out and about to take a picture or to tell me how much they love me in ballers. Right. These are the same people. Well, you know, we've had incidences out that way, you know, on the island out there, you know. In uh, basic, Martha's Vineyard, we're um, in Martha's Vineyard, yeah. yeah. where they actually gave us a book about <laughs> slavery. Yeah, I mean, literally, we checked into a hotel and they said, we have some reading material for you and gave us a book about the history of slavery on the island of Martha's Vineyard. And this is at a super high-end hotel when we were out there for a film festival to promote a movie about racial equality. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And they see no problem with that. It's a casual racism that 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 goes everywhere in our society that unfortunately the people who are a part of the problem who also have uh probably the greatest chance of influencing changing the system are unaware that they are part of the problem and that they are actually a part of the system. Right. I agree totally. It's unbelievable to me. You look at this situation with this kid, the youngest kid of the year that was killed by the police was killed about a week ago. This kid down in Texas, Jordan Edwards. The kid was fatally shot by a police officer. And thank God this menace to society was charged with murder on Friday. Um, but he posted bail and he's out. But he his, his statement was that after uh, getting a report of underage drinking at a house party, him and another officer entered the house uh, but left after they heard, said they heard gunshots outside. Then they saw a car with five black teenagers driving recklessly towards them. So he felt the need to shoot off his AR-15 at a car full of kids. Well, what the body cam has since shown is, is that actually uh, the kids were driving away from them. Nobody was driving in a menacing way. And he ended up ending the life of this kid, Jordan Edwards. And, I, I really I pray for his family. I'm I just I'm so sorry. My heart bleeds for you guys. Right. The kid was a freshman at Mesquite High School. He was an A student. He was on the football team. He just went to go to a party at, at with his friends. What drives a person to do something like that? And then you don't feel like there's any remorse because this guy literally lied about it and he won't even stand up and take the responsibility for doing something like that. Knowing he's wearing a body cam. Knowing that he's wearing a body cam, but that shows you how comfortable they are with doing that. And that makes you understand that in his mind, he was going to be bailed out. He right. was going to get the bailout package. But they all live under this whole thing that, you know, I feared for my life. So he thought he can go to the I fear for my life card yep. as he shoots in, into a, a carload of kids. A carload of children that were driving away from him. And his biggest problem is that he got caught. Not that, this is his biggest problem. <laughs> that's his that's biggest, a great point. You know. That's a great point, T. His biggest problem in this scenario is that he got caught. Not that he killed this kid and, right. and, and could have killed all of them. Right. An AR-15? Come on, man. This it's is a military an weapon. assault rifle? Model 15? And they say that you don't want the public to have them, but you want the officers to have them that you can't trust. Not all of them, but a guy like that who's rogue, I'm sure that he's had something on his record before to let you know that he's been doing something like that. Or maybe even more scary, he actually did doesn't have anything on his record. That would be the worst. And he's done and is doing stuff like this at his leisure and getting away with it just, uh, you know, under the, the the code of blue. Now, don't get this twisted, folks. I'm actually not against the police. No. Uh, I am against the corruption that protects corrupt people in authority. And I don't want to hear any nonsense about anybody telling me, what about all the people that kill each other? What about all the black people that kill other black people? Yes, that's terrible, too. And un- unbeknownst to you, no one takes an oath 
to not kill each other. Right. There is no there's no code that you take when you wake up as a kid and say, you know what, I'm I'm applying for this job as a black person and I am not going to kill other uh black people or other people. You've accepted no. a higher calling. And 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 when you are an authority figure, you went and presented yourself as someone of strong moral character who could be trusted to resolve problems and not cause problems, but you were then going another direction by whatever justification that you see fit. This is a whole issue with this situation right now in general. You talk about with the evil with the the immigrants because now they're saying that crime is down in the in the in the, a lot of the immigrant uh, neighborhoods because they're not reporting it to the police. Well, there's a trust factor there. There's a trust problem there. So that you trust can't, problem uh, that you can't call the police. So even if you have a problem, you can't call them, which thereby leads to more corruption, more corruption, more vigilante justice. Right. It's a it's a serious thing to think about, folks. You gotta you have to be realistic about this. I'm I am by no means all an all or nothing person. It's not all police officers. No. All black people, no. all white people, all Latinos, blah blah blah. I'm not that person. But we all have to examine ourselves and make sure that we are part of the solution and not part of the problem. Treat people like you want to have your family treated, and I think that everybody will be alive. <laughs> That's if you like your family. Yeah, if you like your family. Treat, <laughs> treat people how you want yourself to be treated. This is the golden rule uh, as as the, in, in the biblical sense, to love your neighbor as you love yourself, not the other way around, not, not how you want anybody else to be treated because for some reason self-preservation always trumps, you know, everything, which is just just be decent. Just be decent. Don't kill kids if you're a cop unless you absolutely have to. Right. You know, if you are a scary person, don't become a person who gets into a job that has a lot of risky and and aggressive inter- interactions. interactions with the public. Don't do it. You're there to serve the people. You're not the other way around. Right. You're not there to serve the genocide. It's just it's disturbing. Um, but that I really had to get that off my chest. But back to the to the baseball of it. Kurt Schilling's a piece of crap. I'm confident in that. I'm going to pray for Kurt Schilling because I pray that the Lord opens his eyes because this is really unfortunate what he's doing, um, well, usually, promoting this nonsense. Yeah, and usually what the problem is that he has children, and a lot of times, you know, as a parent, you'll promote that to your children, and it'll keep growing and growing and growing, and it never stops. Hopefully they didn't grab onto that side of him that's very, very ugly. I hope not. But how about these baby bombers? The New York Yankees are real. They are very real. Very real. And if they can get the kind of uh if they can get the kind of starting pitching that they got from Jordan Montgomery and Lou Severino consistently, these Yankees will be playing deep into October. I think the regression that you'll see is after the um All Star break when the little they, fatigue. Well, the fatigue of it all, and then also they're gonna start figuring out some of these kids like Aaron Judge and whatnot and figuring out how to get these guys out more so. And that's going to, you know, send them back. And then how do they handle the adversity of not succeeding at that point? And that's where you can never see, you know, you can never predict that. But at the same time, it is this is the part of being a part of a great organization. Yeah. Because when you're a part of the Yankees organization, they teach you how to win. You got guys there like Brett Gardner. Brett Gardner showed you classic Yankee. Yeah. Well, Joe Girardi. Joe Girardi. Joe Girardi's a winner, man. Even what he did with those kids last year. Yep. He had him in the, you know, he had him in a race. Yeah. And they shouldn't have been there. They didn't have anything. Yeah, bubble gum and, and tape. Man. Man, man, man. And he had him in it. And if they're about Tanaka's to play the Astros this weekend. Can, can stay together. They're about to play the Reds now. Yeah. This is great. I mean, I'm I'm very impressed by the Yankees. And the Red Sox sticks woke up and it seems like it, it's about to go down as it usually does. And then you got Baltimore in the mix. That, that right, American but, League. But East. but look at the Baltimore doesn't really have that much pitching and neither, And they don't have their closers. Something yeah. could seriously be wrong with Zach Britton. Right. And the Red Sox don't have a lot of front line pitching. They need David Price back. You got Chris Sale and you have, you know, everybody else's suspect. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have Chris Sale is the ace and you need Nowadays, it's like basketball. You need two guys that are right. – it's like you need two superstars. Rick Porcello's inconsistent at this point. Stephen Wright is done now. Uh, yeah, you have Drew Pomerantz and Eduardo Rodriguez. Yeah, Eduardo Rodriguez is probably the best bet that they got. I think Drew Pomerantz because Eduardo is not going past five innings. And I don't yeah, even think he's he got to grow his – he's yeah. got to grow his stamina. He's walking too many people. Yeah, but I feel like they need a right-handed stud. They need like right? – and Porcello is that guy if he can, if he can get it done. The Cubs, though, are streaking the other direction. I mean, they got swept at home at Wrigley Field. I'd love to know when the last time was that that happened. 
Um, they got swept at home. And now they're heading out to Colorado where they already don't have any pitching because right. they paid a 19, 18 inning game last night. And their, their bullpen has been getting exhausted because Brett Anderson got shelled and hurt in, in the first inning of that game. Now, do you think he was hurt for real? I mean, I, you know what? Honestly, I don't even think it matters because whether <laughs> he was hurt or not, he's not. He shouldn't be a major league pitcher anymore, in my opinion. Yeah, there's a lot of guys. He, he's he's taking somebody's spot. He's at taking this point. somebody's spot, and that's not even on Brett Anderson because if they want to pay him for that, and then they don't understand that they can go get some of these kids that are actually ready to go, like the Yankees did. Right? Then that's on them. But well, they, they gave come- away a lot of their farm system to get Aroldis Chapman to get that ring. Right. So I don't know, I you know, but obviously the, the Cubs don't have a, a money problem, and they don't have a problem with anybody wanting to come play for Joe Madden. They have some kids down in the minor leagues too. Yeah, this is what I'm saying. So it'll be interesting to see what they do to stop that gap. We got uh, Jake Arrieta pitching in Colorado tonight, and Jake Arrieta has been getting hit hard. I'm taking the Rockies. Okay, take the Rockies, brother. I'm not trying to stop you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, boy, you better watch out, dude. I think by the time most people hear it, the game already may already be over. I'm just saying that they're going into a situation where they're going to need a lot of pitching. They're going to need innings eaters. And they don't have them. Yeah, I was just reading that the Yankees are starting to bring up their inning eaters right now. But that's really? A twister. Yeah, Chad Green and a couple oh, other yeah, 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 yeah. They need some guys to fill up their bullpen, man. The yeah. arms got wore out last night. Sure did. And yeah. not just last night. I mean, they, yeah, the I whole... mean they, they got Chapman. They tagged Chapman for three. That was pretty amazing. Um, but baseball is in full swing. I love it. The Astros look really good. The Astros are Really, they really need good. some more starting pitching. Well, they're not really. They have Lance McCullers and they have Dallas Keuchel, who's pitching like he did two years ago. Yep, and Musgrove is inconsistent. Uh, but you have two starters right there. Though. Fires is inconsistent. Yeah, Fires is uh, and, and, on the downside. And uh, you start Charlie Morton, who's also. Uh, but Charlie Morton's been great this year. He's been good. I don't want to say he's been great. Yeah, I don't know. I might give up a great. Let me look at Charlie's yeah, number. Yeah, oh, Charlie. Yeah. Did you also give up superstar pretty easy? But, but not but not for but, no baseball players. <laughs> I give it up for the basketball players because they call everybody great in basketball. No about that. But yeah. they I don't but but with that, I think that if you could get Musgrove on board and get him, you know, up to code, I think that would help a lot. I think the Reds are starting to fizzle. Tell me what you heard about this uh Billy Hamilton, John Ross race. Oh, man. I heard that they're supposed to be doing something, putting something together for charity. And Billy, um, Billy Hamilton wants to find out who's the fastest guy in Cincinnati. How? In Ohio. Ohio really. Them apples. Yeah. That's so the kid, be great. John Ross the third, who set the record at the NFL Combine for speed, uh, running that 4-2-2, is going to be in Ohio. And Billy Hamilton, the center fielder for the Reds, who is lightning quick, also wants to test his skills. And I think it's going to be a great race, a great good kudos to those guys because they're right. talking about doing it for charity. Everybody's going to watch that. I'm definitely in. I want to see it, man. That's a that's a great race right there. Football versus baseball. You know, that's awesome. That is awesome. I think uh, <laughs> you're awesome. <laughs> Thanks, think- Ulster. <laughs> <laughs> no problem, brother. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think uh I think that that I think that's pretty cool. I I'm I'm pretty excited about that potentially happening. Last thing that I want to cover is the Lonzo Ball story. What has happened now? Is the ZO2. No, I mean, I mean, Lonzo Ball dropped his $495 shoe last Are week. Are you getting a pair? I am not getting a pair unless they send me a pair. Um, Would you wear them? What do they look like? I actually don't think they look bad. He got dragged, but I think that that's just the knee-jerk reaction for the, the dollar amount and this, that, and the other. What I wanted to speak, uh, to, to speak, <laughs> what I wanted to speak, <laughs> I can't get it out. What I wanted to speak about um, was... The idea that his father, LeVar Ball, is making the rounds, he's made himself a celebrity, it's a brilliant marketing ploy that he's created because this son is good. Um, I mean, the idea that you charge $500 for a shoe before you want anything is kind of far-fetched to me. Mm-hmm. But coming from a family of entrepreneurs, I understand where the, 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 where he's going with this. And where he's going is is that his boys, all three of them, could potentially get to the NBA. And one of them is going for sure, maybe even to the Lakers first round. Right, first pick. First pick. And uh, and I think that he's capitalizing on the moment, and he's taking a gamble. I think that that's admirable. I've seen a lot of people clowning him about it, but I think that it's admirable in the sense that this is a family affair that all of the the balls are riding with him. Lonzo's riding with him. Lonzo could have easily turned this into a, you know what, Pops? I'd rather just, let's let's dead this. Do this when LaMelo comes up or when one of right. the other sons comes up, and then I'll switch. I'll leave my contract. No, he's riding with his Pops, and there's something beautiful about that, especially in this world where we see so little good news about the, the relationship between black fathers and sons. Right. 
and they want to tear him down. I mean, this is the downside to me because what they want to do is to to actually destroy their family, it seems. You know, there's an, a, almost like a personal attack because he actually has faith in his sons, and they're sticking together, and they should stick together. There's no reason for him not to. You know what? i got to disagree with you on this one. Why I don't know, I don't know if it's a, to, to destroy his family. I think that LeVar Ball, by design, sets himself up to be attacked via the media with his outlandish claims. So I, don't, I can't be surprised when they attack LeVar Ball based on the fact that LeVar Ball says that he would have ate Michael Jordan up in his prime. Yeah, yeah but then they t- attack the kids because they're attacking the father. They attack the kids as well. Kids can't handle the same kind of adversity that a grown man can. Because they, well, but, but this is part. He knows that as the leader of the family, he knows what he's getting them into, which, to his credit, is, is admirable in the fact that he continues to step up. He's always there. It's not like he ever bails on his kids. No. And he's willing to wear his own, his own, you know, outlandish claims. Right. And he's wearing them all on primetime TV. <laughs> Every night. And then he says, yeah. <laughs> Why not? Y'all talking about LeVar Ball. <laughs> Y'all ain't talking about nobody else. <laughs> so Tell them talking, the truth. They're talking about him. It's telling the truth. That's, that's good for them, man. Hopefully they'll make it successful. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think that... that I hope that I hope that they succeed on some level. I mean, at that price point, they can sell a lot less shoes and still be successful. I mean, the, me the myself, only downside they haven't done anything yet. To you that's know, that's a huge downside. To, to, because to validate that, spending that kind of much, you know, spending that money on a five hundred dollars shoe. That, and if you get a signature, you get it for a thousand bucks. And that to me is a little bit like there's a parallel there between President Cheeto and his family selling the office. Uh, it's not as treasonous but i do believe that the kid hasn't won anything and he didn't even win the ncaa tournament um and success as we've seen i go as far as to say lebron james is the only player to ever live up to the hype ever i can't think of one player except for shaquille o'neal um to ever live up to the hype of coming out of college that i can remember college that was mean high school as good no, that was as good oh. coming out of college and then going to the pros as they could have been. Oh, okay. So LeBron James obviously came out of high school. I'm saying anybody that, that's come out, nobody expected Kevin Garnett to be that great. They thought, okay, he's going to be good. That's why we draft him out of high school. They thought Kobe Bryant's going to be good, but the expectations weren't, oh, right. he's going to be the next Michael Jordan. The LeBron James expectations were he's the one. He's the chosen one. He's the next one. Uh-huh. And he became that. Right. Um, and I think that Shaquille O'Neal was, man, <laughs> this guy down in Louisiana that nobody's going to be able to stop people. on any level. <laughs> and he, guess what? He got to the league and, and they still couldn't him. hold him. Yeah. And you know what I mean? And so, and yeah, it took all of those guys a few years to learn how to win, but the expectations that are now on Lonzo Ball, especially if the Lakers choose him to resurrect the Lakers. Uh, it's a lot. I think he's going to be good, but I think that also he has to be put in the right situation. The Lakers, like everybody, Lakers are a team full of guards, and uh, Gee, exactly. So I don't. They're know They're like how the, the Angels and outfielders, right? So I don't know how that's going to fit. But also, you know, I mean, his body frame doesn't look like the type of frame that would be able to hang up to the banging and bashing that they're going to do in the NBA. Probably going to take him because there's going to be so much pressure on him to perform in it's going to be a lot of pressure he, on him when perform. he first comes out that I don't think that he's going to develop probably for another 3 or 4 years to what he should be potentially. I really think I I don't know if he can get his shot off in the NBA. I'm yeah. telling you shooting from the chest, those guys got bunnies. They, yeah. Them boys can jump. And they gave him a problem in the, you know, in comp- and and all them kids in in Fox and all them kids in the tournament realized that and they, and they got closed in him. out on him. They closed in him <laughs> and uh-huh. then they yeah. And he couldn't get that shot off. Whew. Spirited edition of the Ozone, folks. I gave it my all. I hope we gave you something to chew on. You got anything else to cover, Icons? That's it. I mean, going to leave you with a quote about perseverance. It is going to come from Pele, the all-time soccer great. Success is no accident. It is hard work, perseverance, learning, studying, sacrifice, and most of all, love of what you are doing or learning to do. Ladies and gentlemen, passion will take you a long way. Stay with it. Love one another. We can fix it. Ozo. Ozo. Here's a chance to dance our way out of our constriction. Go the beat freaking up and down the hang up alleyway with a groove I only got.